Hello, Michael here from Small Robot Studio with another RenderMan 23 tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at how to use the Pixar Curvature node and um, some simple use cases that you could have for it. So the first thing we're going to do in this scene is create a polyplane and just increase the scale of that. And we're going to turn off our grid because we're not going to use that. Then we're going to create a cube. And I'm just going to extrude one of those faces in by selecting it, hitting Control E and extruding that in and then extruding it again like so next we'll add in a couple of lights so we're going to add in a dome light and we're just going to move that down a bit closer to the ground and then we'll add in a rectangle light as well i'll increase that so now when we render the scene should look something like this okay so let's add some materials uh, the first thing we'll do is add a ground material and assign it to the ground we'll open up our hypershade editor which you can do so by clicking up here mine's docked in the right hand side but yours will probably open up over the top so with that mapped out we'll just change the name of that to be ground and then we will select our cube and we will create another pixar surface and we'll call this one cube now let's add in, the, add in the curvature node. We're going to just type in PXR curve. We'll get the curvature. Just tab to bring up that search menu. Then we're going to run the result RGB into the diffuse color. And if we render now, you'll see the effect. So what it's doing essentially is detecting the edges at the moment. It will detect any change in angle across the surface. Um, so if you've got a smooth curve or a sharp edge it will detect those uh, depending on how you change the values in the curvature node itself so we'll run through though through those pretty quick um, the first one is the max distance if you increase this to 0.5 for example you'll see that the distance increases and then conversely if you decrease it it will make it smaller um, i'll increase that to show the next thing sample distribution will and define the interpolation of samples so in uniform it will sample uniformly from the curve to the um, outer outside of it and then cosine you will notice that it samples more closer to the curvature we're just going to leave that on uniform for now and then reduce the max distance down to 0.1 again uh, bias will affect the sample distribution so again it's biasing more towards the curve and then this way more towards the edge we'll leave that on 0.5 we're just going to skip past the threshold for the moment um, to look at the output the output gain will increase the gain so you'll get a higher value and then the output type will tell you whether or not it's going to sample the concave areas of the curvature so in this case the inside of the cube or the convex which will be the outside of the cube we're going to keep it on both now to look at our thresholds what i'm going to do is select my cube and add a bevel to it and we're going to change that bevel to be now we'll just keep it as is actually that's fine now let's remap that so it's a bit cleaner so the curvature uh, the convex threshold we'll look at convex here um, we'll just determine at what point sort of at what angle it's going to uh, introduce uh, color so detect an edge um, so as you increase this you'll see that you're getting less of the white colors and then as you decrease it you'll see you're getting more of the white colors so it's 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 allowing more through at a lower threshold and then the same works for your um, concave now to use the curvature node I'm just going to create a new box and assign our cube material to it and then rerun the render in the viewport so you'll see that it's back to its sort of default state but I'm also going to assign a curvature node to our ground plane but instead of assigning it to the diffuse input we're going to we're going to run the result F which is the float output into the glow gain and by doing this, I'll just reduce that color a little bit so the ground is a little bit darker and it makes it easier to see. What we can do here is as we move the cube closer to the ground, 
you'll see that it starts to glow on the ground. And this will work with both concave and convex enabled, however I would use both. And then you can increase the glow spread. You could change it to cosine, and this for this sort of type of thing I probably would change it to cosine. Um, and then you can adjust from there whether you bias it outward or inward. Like so. Obviously you don't have to use it for glow, but that is just an easy example to show you. Another thing we can do is use it to create masks. So if we select our cube and create a Pixar layer surface, we have our base layer here, which I'm going to call base, and then we're going to have this one as the edge. The base layer I'm going to keep as a gray color, but our edge color I'm going to make red. And to mask it off so the edge color is only red, we're going to use a curvature node and run the result F into the layer 1 mask. So now if we render it, and it is enabled, you can see now that only our edge is getting the red. What this is useful for is that we could actually enable specularity just on that edge now. So now that you get now you get a specular edge and a diffused surface otherwise. So you can see how this would be useful for creating edge wear on your objects and things like that. And remember if you want to see more of your edge you could just increase the output gain. So now we've got a very nice red or kind of getting pink because it's getting blown out um, edge that is specular where the face of the cube is not. So there you go that's just a brief overview of the curvature node. That's it for this tutorial. If you found it useful, make sure you leave a like so other people can find it. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe as we're bringing out CG and illustration tutorials every week, just like this one. Become a patron and access tutorial assets, bonus content, a private discord, and more by clicking the link below.